guys, Tammy Trayer, TrayerWilderness.com. Hope you guys are doing well today. I'm going to wait a little bit here and hope that some of you pop on here. Got some neat things to show you and interesting discussion, I think, today. Good morning, Vicki Lynn. <laughs> morning, Chad. Okay, I thought I'd wait and get a couple of you on here anyway before I started. Um, hope you guys are doing good today. It's a little dreary here today in northern Idaho. I get spoiled by the beautiful sunshine like we had yesterday. But I hope you guys are doing good. And um, we have some interesting uh, conversations, I think, today. Um, I wanted to start off by showing you guys a little something. I've been encouraging you guys to, you know, do something new, do something on your list that I've asked you to create of, you know, um, just learning something new. Now, I, I have to, I have to confess, my name is Tammy Trier and I have a leather fetish. And I know that sounds funny, but I have always loved the smell of leather. I've always, um, had a leather handbag fetish. I just was always very attracted to leather so it's very fitting that we live in the wilderness and we do a lot with leather working now and Sunday I had the urge to do something creative and artsy and I had this piece of it's hard with my lighting there maybe you can see it okay good morning Jill this is a piece of sheep hide and I really love the rough look of leather like I like its uniqueness um, that it has all by itself you know the edges and stuff and I've had this piece sitting around and, and white is not something that really goes really well in the wilderness it, it's gonna get dirty and I'm not even sure exactly how I ended up with this hide I think the intention initially with this hide was that we were gonna practice dyeing it and I never got that far but I thought what a perfect piece of leather to use to cover my Inspire Bible and my journaling Bible. So I sat down on Sunday and took a straight edge, got my leather, and I did some stitching. I stitched the edges here so that I could give it a nice look here and so that I could put my edge and uh, my book cover, my front book cover in there. And then in the back, Hopefully you guys can see this. I just stitched a strip of leather in here to do the same with the back cover so that I could have it fastened and attached so that it was easier to manage. Now, like I said, I like the rough edges of the leather, so I wanted it to be a flap. I was thinking snaps, but I also didn't want the snaps to ruin the look of the unique leather and being the Bible's an old book per se, I thought wrapping this piece of leather, I stitched it on there with X's, I don't know if you can see that. Um, and then you just wrap this around here three times and you can tuck the loose end in here. And it, it smells so good. I love leather. Anyway, this is what I did on Sunday. This was my um, artsy free time craft that I did. And I'm actually working on a bag right now. Um, I wanted a bag, small bag, lightweight. Um, so I'm using some light leather. And I wanted to be able to uh, put my gun in there and uh, my phone and just have everything self-contained so that I could grab it out of my uh, backpack that I carry all the time and just go in and out of stores to run errands or just have something lightweight to take to church. Um, good morning, Deb. So that's my next project, and I will do a video on this. Uh, you guys got snow again. We have we have snow here still. We had 44 inches that needed to melt away, so we're walking in about a foot of snow, but it's been nice and sunny. It was still pretty raw yesterday, but it was sunny. So sorry to hear about your snow. <laughs> I'm usually the one that's loving the snow, but this year, this is my second year post-surgery, and I'm really finding that when we hit this point in the season, I really start to go downhill and start struggling because of mold and snow mold. Mold because of the moisture and I never even knew there was such a thing as snow mold. So I've been suffering from the mold. So I'm really ready for spring this year, which is not 
I love the seasons, so it's not normal for me. But I just thought I'd show this to you guys. Um, if you're interested in looking up the Inspire Bible, the uh, information is in the description below. Uh, but it's treyerwilderness.com slash inspire. I love this Bible. I bought this when I was um, flat on my back after my surgery. And this is the first Bible that I put my hands on that has really sunk in. That when I read it, I understand it. Um, this is an NLT version, New Living Translation, versus the King James. I get lost in the these and the thous. But also, um, it's a proven fact that when you are doodling and drawing and coloring, um, you open up different spots of your brain that start to help you absorb better. So it's a really good concept. And I've always, I've wanted to write in, in little notes in my Bibles, but I've always just felt like I was kind of like, um, I don't know. It just didn't feel right to me. This one, it's supposed to be that way. So it feels right to me. So <laughs> I've been doing a lot of uh, writing and a lot of uh, journaling in there and really have been absorbing. So I wanted to share that. That was just something that I did. And I was asked if I would please do a video on that. So I will do a video on that and also on my bag that I'm creating. Because really, guys, leather work is not that difficult. And it's, I mean, a hide is certainly a lot less expensive than purchasing the actual items because you get so much uh, a cow hide and elk hide they're huge um, so you can make a lot of things with them so anyway that was my my unique thing and I encourage you guys to do it because it feels good and um, it kind of ins it, it doesn't kind of inspires you to keep doing more so today's topic I thought we would talk about this because um, I noticed something this week. Good morning, Rachel. I noticed something this week. Honestly, I can't recall where I saw it, um, but it was it was a headline um, questioning whether you know preparedness and the homesteading um, efforts are are starting to fade. And my assistant Michelle and I were talking on Monday. And it was really funny that she brought it up also. So I thought, what a great topic to talk about um, because it's something that I feel should never really kind of dissipate. But I think I understand what's happening. And through our conversations, I just thought we'd talk about it. Um, one of the things is our country, things in our country are in some ways starting to feel a little more com comfortable. Um, it's not as scary as it was. Uh, the president is making positive efforts and positive movement. Um, and I think what happens is when we, we were feeling stressed, urgent, if you will, in our preparedness efforts, um, now it's not quite as urgent because things are starting to happen. However, that's happening at a country level, global level, if you will, but we still have our home front and our hub that we need to consider. And I think also what happens is, as I've been preaching to you guys, to keep moving forward, to keep making your list, to keep embracing new things, to keep learning new skills. And I think what happens is when we start to check those things off of our list and we start to feel a little bit of a comfort level set in, we start to step back a little bit and we start to get comfortable in our own efforts and kind of don't continue um, pursuing it, kind of like a New Year's resolution, kind of like um, our, our big theme this year of living with intention. You know, we start to get comfortable. And not that comfortable is not good. I just put a um, post out on Instagram today from my blog post a couple, a week ago or so. Um, slow, slow mornings, uh, slow starts in a peaceful morning is what it was called. And, you know, we want to have those comfort areas in our life. You need that. We need that comfort spot. We need those comfortable things like reading the Bible you know, uh, spending time with your family, your children, we all need that, but we can't allow those times to take our guard down. And I think that's really important. And when I say guard down, you know, you guys that have been following me for a long time and following us know that we are not a doom and gloom and a, uh, you know, shove fear down your throat 
kind of educators, uh, we take a very different approach. Um, because it shouldn't be that way. You shouldn't be going through life scared and, and afraid of things. But we should be going through life um, prepared, um, looking out for our own, uh, just constantly focusing on what's important. And I think that we can do that without the fear involved. But what I'm saying is we start to get comfortable. Good morning, Keith. Um, it's, it's, it's that we get comfortable in our efforts and we start to step back from paying attention. Um, a good example, just, just off the top of my head, you know, you, you have all your stuff set aside for when the power goes out. You have all your candles and all your lanterns, all your lantern oil. You know, you have a couple power outages out here in Idaho in the wintertime. That is so common. So at least for the rest of the world, being off grid, we don't deal with that. But you know, you go through a couple power outages, you use your oil, you use your candles. The next thing you know, you got another power outage and you don't have supplies. So, you, you know, you start letting your guard down and you start not restocking things and you start not paying attention to those things. And of course, at that moment, that's when your preparedness fight or flight mode kicks in and you start paying attention again. But the thing is, we've got to be diligent on our own, even when the country and things around us get comfortable, we can't let our guard down and we can't let things out of our sights because that's when, that's when struggles set in. Same with medical supplies and things like that, you know, all of that stuff, all the things that we've talked about in the past, all the things that we've been covering to pay attention to and to keep on hand, like your food. Um, I know a lot of you, maybe not on this particular um, Facebook Live, but a lot of you that may listen in on this, um, don't keep a good food supply. You might shop weekly. You might shop, you know, monthly. So suppose you have something that settles in in our country and it goes longer than a month. How are you going to feed your family? So I don't want you to start getting comfortable in your situation and your surroundings because things feel comfortable. And, it, and like I said, it's not that we need to live life through fear. It's just a matter of being proactive. We need to be proactive and we need to think, uh, you know, as us adults, we need to think of our families. We need to educate our families so that when our, our children leave home, they think of these things. And and that's what we are missing from the lot, the, you know, the things that are being handed down or lack of things being handed down. You know, that's what our ancestors did. They were always preparing. Oh, I'm sorry. A little bit of a squirrel. Um, this weekend, the mountain boy and I watched a movie called 17 Miracles. Really awesome, awesome movie. If you guys are looking to see what our ancestors had to go through to get, you know, settled in here in our country back in the day. I think it's like 1856 is when this takes place. 1847 into 1856. So I didn't have that in the description, but go to treyerwilderness.com slash 17 miracles. It's the number one seven miracles and check that out. It's family friendly. For those of you that have Amazon Prime, it's an Amazon Prime video, but amazing, amazing edge of your seat story. Um, family friendly. So check it out. Um, let's see. Jill says food prep, no different from house and car insurance. Yeah. You know, you gotta, you gotta, we've got to take care of our immediate needs and, and think of those things. You know, we've talked about it before where our society today makes everything so convenient and so easy and everything's at our fingertips and we have the electronic gadgets and we have everything, but we're becoming dependent on the wrong stuff and we're becoming dependent. We should still have a sense of independency and dependency on our own. You know, as we've discussed before, that's part why we are living off the grid. We wanted a freedom to live our life the way we wanted to do it. Dry canning. I think it's the only way I can stock food, but I don't have storage space. Uh, yeah, Rachel, consider unusual spots. One of my friends is called the apartment prepper. 
And Bernie stocks things under her bed, in her closets, and in very unusual places. And you can, you and I know, um, you're you're a thrifter like I am. Old suitcases make great storage space, but also enable you to have something that looks decorative in your home. So be creative, um, use your space wisely. We have a bed um, that the Mountain Man made, and I honestly need a stool to get on it. He needs to kind of jump and stretch to get on it. He hasn't. He went stoop to a stool. He wanted to lower the bed. And I told him no because that had great storage space underneath it. Um, our house isn't super huge, so we're always looking for places to store things. So all my canners are underneath there. Um, so that gives you an idea how tall it is because the canners fit underneath it upright. So use your space wisely. And um, I agree with you, Rachel. Um, either canning your, your fresh foods or also stocking up on freeze-dried foods, dehydrated foods. Dehydrated foods are lightweight, so in a survival situation, if you had to get up and go, you know, you could grab a couple baggies full of dehydrated food and have a lot of food available to you and your family. Uh, so considering those things, yep, underneath the couch, Jill mentioned, uh, Rachel, underneath the couch. So that's, yes, exactly. Use your storage space wisely in the back of your linen closet, behind your sheets. I mean, you can put stuff all over the place. And we have a storage shed that we store a lot of things in as well. Um, but like we were saying, the dehydrated foods are very lightweight and they take up a lot less space depending how you store them using... Um, uh, the varying uh, bags and um, so you don't have to store everything in jars. I do. I like my jars. But if you're looking to conserve on space, you can also do um, your, I'm sorry, my brain's not working with me at the moment, but we, we store our meat in the, um, oh my word, somebody help me. When you're dry, uh, Vacuum sealing, good night. When you vacuum seal your food, um, you can vacuum seal all your, your dried foods and, and put them in the uh, vacuum sealed pillow containers that they make so that you have your food in a space this big. And like I said, you could put that in your linen closet and, and stash that kind of stuff. So there's all kinds of ways you just need to get creative. And... Being diligent like that and not not getting comfortable, I think, is so important because our society makes it so easy to start just feeling comfortable. And then when things happen, we're uncomfortable. And um, by the way, that's a great time, too, if you have people that don't understand the preparedness movement or the homesteading movement and you're trying to accomplish that and you're fighting your way there, one of the best ways to get them on board is to experience an uncomfortable situation with them and show them that you're prepared. Uh, you know, when you are without your, your uh, simple pleasures in life, it makes things really uncomfortable for people, especially people that don't understand why we are so fanatical about it. And it's not even that we're fanatical about it. It's that I think we're just being downright smart. You know, who wants to be in a situation where you don't have any food or water? Water is another big and very important and huge aspect of things that if you are on city water and you don't have backup water and the power goes out, you know very well you don't have any water coming in. Water and food are your priorities. You can only go three days without water. So it's not something that you want to even chance, okay? Um... So what are some things that you guys focus on in your preparedness um, avenues at your place? So obviously food is one. We've talked about the food. Um, and, and food prep is really important. To me, food prep is extremely important because I can't imagine living any other way than we, the way we do. Like if I run out of a spice, like say I run out of chili, my, my homemade chili powder, 
I have so much extra on hand of the other spices that I can remake that all winter long. Same with uh, um, my salad dressings. All I need is olive oil and I can continue to make all kinds of salad dressings all winter long with all the spices that I keep on hand. The same holds true for my herbal pantry. Um, making varying teas, tinctures, whatever I need um, to get us through winter and to keep us healthy. So, um, all those things are things that we really need to consider. Eat what you prep and prep what you eat. Yep. Yeah. And Jill and I have had separate conversations about gardening. You know, you learn, you start gardening slow um, and, and to a smaller degree until you learn the process. And as you learn the process, you add more to continue to feed your family. And as you add more, you realize each year how much more you might need or that you're at a sufficient level for certain things. I mean, our chili sauce... I think we had 87 quarts this year, if my mind uh, is cooperating on that number. But um, knowing that you have enough to get you through the winter, you figure you've got 52 weeks in a year. That's how I go. I'm not even looking at the winter. I'm looking at the year. you got 52 weeks in a year, and I want to be able to do so many meals using our chili sauce a week, you know, whether it's one or two. Um, so there's really great ways to figure out what you need with your food and also, um, you know, going through a season and, and learning how fast you go through things, how much flour you utilize. So a quarter of the year, figure out how much flour you utilize. Now, some of you, you know, you may not use as much as I do, but I am making three loaves of bread, at least three loaves of bread every week. That's just for our sandwich bread and maybe uh, some bread with meals. But I also make, um, I made blueberry bread the other day and I'll make like a cinnamon bun bread and I'm always making desserts to go along with that. So you got to figure in the amount of flour you're using and, and figure out what you need. Just, you know, do something as small as a quarter of a year so that you have enough on hand and, and figuring out your most important staples your salt, your sugar, your flour, um, your baking soda, um, the, you know, the things you use the most, your spices, um, baking powder, baking soda, vinegar, uh, olive oil, uh, vanilla is another one I use a lot of. I'm just trying to think off the top of my head the things I go to the most and the ones that I have the stock of the most. Um, but having an idea of what you need for your raw ingredients. Now, many of you may be, you know, living conveniently and doing a lot of processed foods. We don't do any processed foods. It's all from scratch. So, you know, learning to figure out your needs. And if you, you know, and this is part of the preparedness aspect. When you run out of something, you are instantly learning and recording what you need to keep better stock of or what you've started using more of because you've started converting from processed food to more from scratch. So as you go through that process, you're going to learn and also learn what the staples are that you need to keep up. Chocolate chips are another one. We do non-GMO chocolate chips. So no, we don't do you know Hershey's bars and that kind of stuff, but we keep chocolate chips on hand. And we'll go grab a handful of those every once in a while. Um, coconut, raw, unsweetened coconut, I keep a lot of. You know, so with Easter coming, I can make my peanut butter eggs and I can make my coconut eggs. I keep confectioners, non-GMO confectioner sugar on hand. Uh, you know, these are things I keep a lot of on hand. So learning how to do that. And then learning also, like um, powdered milks. We don't do the dairy still even though the mountain boy is now able to have dairy i'm still leaning toward keeping my non-dairy stuff available and um, i do powdered coconut milk so i have that available in quantity so that we can do whatever we need to do you know um, make some coconut milk up to get those mashed potatoes good and slathered with milk and butter you know so learning to live you know we live this way and people think that it's hard and that, you know, um, we're missing out on all the, the, sim the, the great pleasures of the world. But really, uh, we eat like kings during the winter months. And even when I was sick and we went six and a half months without an income and through this winter where things have been a little tough for us, we don't ever starve because that's one thing that we keep plenty of is our food. 
food and firewood. We got a roof over our head and there's not much else we need. So keep that in mind guys, because what is your, what is your take on it? Is preparedness dying? You, you know, you think as a society, when you look at the way people are going about life, do you feel like preparedness is dying in the multitude mindset and that there's just a couple of us left behind that are trying to really think ahead and plan ahead? I'd, I'd like to think not. I'd like to think and hope that maybe some of us are getting, you know, some out there are getting comfortable, but in the back of their mind, they're still thinking. Or that they've got their food really under control. They've got their their preps under control. They've got plenty, plenty of medical supplies. And, you know, they're just comfortable because they keep going at it and keep restocking as they need to. I'd like to hope that because... I really feel that even though things are getting comfortable, it's our due diligence to keep, you know, ourselves stocked, prepared, and ready for anything. And that's where, again, the Trier Wilderness Academy is going to come into play in teaching you all the skills that we use here. Deb said, my hubby got salt to preserve meat in the freezer. Like, if we lost electricity, at least I think that was his plan. Awesome. Awesome. Salt is a huge preservative for and, and useful in a lot of things. Um, I found the book, The Food Substitutions Bible, a great book to have just in case. Not not lucky to need, to need. Right. Exactly. And it's good to have those books on hand. I believe I have... I'm not sure if it's that one or not, but there's a couple of them and I will make a list of, there's also gardening Bibles and herb Bibles and I have multitudes of all of those on hand. That's really important too. And Jill, I'm glad you brought that up. Having hard copy books is really important because if something happens that we lose all of our electronics, we're all going to be flubbering. Also creating books and printing out you know, how-tos and recipes and things. I have tons of herbal recipes that are on my Kindle or on my iPad, but also in my, in my Evernote, but also printed. So it's really important to have these things because when it comes time to possibly resort back to traditional ways, books are that tradition and so is paper in hand. So, guys, I really encourage you not to lose sight of these things and regardless how comfortable things get, to continue to keep being diligent in your practices and in stocking up and in keeping things available for yourself and for your family. Don't lose sight of that. I just... I. I just keep seeing more and more signs of that and I don't, you know, like I said, it's not a fear tactic by any stretch. Um, we aren't supposed to fear. We aren't supposed to live in fear. You know, we're supposed to go day to day. And, you know, God wants us to rely on Him, but I also feel that it is spoken and written that we are also supposed to do our part. We can't just sit there. I mean, there's a great feeling in having that much faith and hope in God, but at the same time, I think that the Holy Spirit rattles our cage a little bit to make sure that we are doing our part. And if you feel that that the Holy Spirit is nudging you to make sure you're doing the best you can do, do it. Because we need to also do our part. And I feel that's very important. You know, and it's doesn't mean that we get so prepared and so set up that we don't need God. That's not what it's about either. I, I've heard people question us on that as well. And and that's that's not what it is either. Because in my mind and in my opinion, there will never come a time where we will be to a point where we don't need Him. But we do need to do our due diligence. So, in the resources today, I have... Besides the Inspire Bible, I have three different links in there. And I want to encourage you guys to read these books. Um, trying to think if in David Kirshner's. In the Aftermath series, there's a couple um, superlatives used. But it's a pretty clean book. And um, there's two of them. It's Aftermath and Aftermath 2. And you can find those by going to tryourwilderness.com slash aftermath. I think that young teens can read those books and gain a lot from them, but I'd, you know, I'd encourage you guys to read them first and figure out, you know, you decide that. It's your family. Um, I encourage the Mountain Boy to read those. A book for kids, young kids, and 
Um, if you ladies out there and men, if you like the Little House on the Prairie series and you read those books, you too will want to read this book. Lost on Hope Island is a phenomenal book. And it's all, it, it's, it's a great book. It keeps you wanting to just keep reading. I read the book and I couldn't, I couldn't put it down. And it's, it's all about aspects of preparedness. And it puts those thoughts into our children's minds in very normal day-to-day -day ways. Um, I highly encourage you guys to check that out. You can find that by going to tryourwilderness.com slash hope island. Um, the other one is David Kirshner. David Kirshner is a phenomenal author. He has written a multitude of books. It's a series also, and I hope to have him on my radio show. He was supposed to be on my radio show right before I got sick, and I haven't had the chance to get back in touch with him to get him on, but his books are really good. They are also family-friendly, um, and the storylines between David Kirshner's books and the Aftermath series really kind of put in your mind in a gentle way the things that you are going to really need to consider if ever anything were to happen and that things are comfortable lifestyle suddenly changed okay even if you're stuck out in the woods you know you're on a hunting trip a camping trip or whatever and you get stuck in the woods you know Skills that are stuck in the back of your mind are good to be there because they do hold purpose and they will at some point possibly need to be used. So the more you know, the better off you are. And you guys hear me preaching this stuff all the time. But I just thought today was a really important time to really remind you not to get comfortable and keep up with your preparedness you know, um, avenues and your, your preparedness efforts, okay? And if you've never really given thought to what all would need to be considered, these are great reads. And then um, there's another one that I will mention as we move on on this series too. But I would like to see you guys being proactive here and, and really thinking things through. And I've talked about it in the very beginning of the year when we were um, talking about our schedules and things to think about. You know, you were to make a list of the different scenarios that may play out in your area. Um, tornadoes, hurricanes, um, storms, power outages volcanoes, earthquakes, all those things. Anything that has happened in your area that has left people stranded should be things that you are thinking about and prepared for. So, you know, go back to those lists. Refresh yourself. And, um, like I said, I encourage you to read these books. And, and for your children, um, the friends that I had over this weekend that I had mentioned last week, um, I, I repurposed an old leather coat, a long leather coat, and the young man made a pouch out of the sleeve of my my coat and it turned out really awesome I will do be doing videos on that too um, and I was teaching uh, the little girl to knit and uh, the little girl Miss Bailey I lent her uh, Lost on Hope Island and she's actually lent it out to a couple friends which I thought was really cute and I'm totally cool with that because I think it's awesome when a kid finds a book you know she's I think she's in second grade and you know at that age to find something so alluring that she wanted others to read it I thought that was really cool and she just raves about the book she really really enjoyed it so just thought I'd put that out there but anyway guys you guys have any topics you want to hear upcoming um, anything going on that you would like to share what are some projects that you have done and you have made uh, Jill does some pretty neat stuff. We've had some conversations and um, love to have you guys share. So don't hesitate sharing in the comments. And for those of you that are watching after the fact, please share in the comments. Uh, we all learn from each other. And for those of you that are watching the video and haven't seen the pinned post here on Facebook, I asked a question last week. What are three things that you would like to learn? If you haven't weighed in on that and chimed in on that, please do so. And um, the Academy is so darn close. I'm so excited. I've been devoting a lot of time to it. It is my, my baby, and I'm very excited to uh, open those doors really soon. So stay tuned because it won't be long. I'm looking at probably a week and a half, two weeks here. Have some testing to do. So if you haven't gone to TreyerWildernessAcademy.com and signed up for our waiting list, please do so. Um, I really feel that you will be excited and will uh, be anxious to see what we have to share. So...
If you guys don't have anything else for me today, I'm going to jump off of here and start digging into that. But guys, I really wish you a great week. And um, I'm just going to say a quick prayer for you all. Dear Jesus, just thank you for this opportunity with these guests and our friends. And Lord, just thank you for putting it on their heart to come and take the time out of their busy day to be here and for sharing their thoughts. And Lord, I just ask that you wrap your arms around them. There are many that are hurting and going through circumstances that I will, will never know, but you know all. And I just ask that you help them through this week, uh, encourage them, inspire them, speak to them and love them. And Lord, just uh, thank you for all you do for us. Thank you for your blessings and your inspiration to us. And, and Lord, just your constant hand. And I ask this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. All right, guys. Still learning on doing business. Please pray for me. You got it, Chad. Always, always. And um, we're always learning. So um, just dig your feet in and keep going. Um, I know you got this. You're rocking it. So guys, have a great week. Thank you for joining me, and stay tuned for some great topics. God bless.